two left. The end is in sight. Two left. Checking first or Beautiful, no, 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 it's all good. Yep, yeah, happy to get that off. All right, mate, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, they're all, they're all the same. Yeah, brilliant. Silicon based K rend, yeah, perfect, in white, excellent. So, 10 bags of that and the pink mesh, excellent. One of the bags snagged on the pallet as it's coming out and ripped, so I'll use that one first. But that's fine. But look how heavy this is, right? 20 kilos, it's about to split a bag, and I've paid 5p for that bag, so it's not a weak bag, but these things are heavy. And now I've got to get it all the way up there. And none of the other boys are here, so 200 kilos up that ladder. I'm gonna take it slow, I'm not gonna rush. I've already put the pink mesh up there. This is gonna be pretty, uh, Pretty tiring. Okay, I'm pretty knackered. These are heavy, heavy bags when you're lifting them up and down. However many meters this is high. They're heavy, they're really heavy. No two ways about it. So, if you want a really good instructional video on how to do this properly, head over to Stu Compton's channel. Best Bricky. Northern lad, absolute pocket, does a really quality job. Him and his dad often, but it's his channel. They do a really, really good job, and they've done a few videos on how to do K rend, scratch coat, and all that. So head over to their channel. I'll leave a link in the description so you can see that. Um, I'll show you what I do, but I'm learning from him, so you might as well go to the source, you know. Two more, two more left. Managed to get it all up here. Ten bags. That's going to be covering all of this side here. Matter puff. Woo. Didn't take a break to get them up there, I promise, promise. Square meter per bag. Now the way you figure out a triangle is basic maths, okay? So you take the base, and whatever the base is, you divide it in two. Half the length of the base, and then you multiply that number by the height. And that will give you the amount of square meters, or whatever, whatever unit you measure in. Do it in inches. I would suggest doing it in centimetres because most things are done in square meterage. And obviously centimetres and metres are friends. So go along, measure your, measure your length. In this case my length is 8 metres. So I go 4 metres. And then I go up 3 metres. Now for those of you that are the math magicians, 4 times 3 is 12. So I've got to do 12 metres here. That's how you work out the area of a triangle. So then figure out how much you need of materials, in this case K-Rend. I've only got 10 square meters, give or take. Now, the bottom section here is not going to have as much render on it. I'm going to put a board up and square off probably the best part of a meter and a half or two meters squared at the bottom there. Also, none of this is going to be seen after I've done it, so it's a bit of a freebie. It's not a freebie, I've paid for the materials. But it's a practice run for when I then come to do the outside and if I do a really terrible job of it, I know that I've got to pay a professional. If I don't do that bad a job, then I can save myself quite a bit of money by doing it myself and just buying the materials and I take the time to do it. It's this age old toss up, right? Do you spend the money getting someone else to do it and get it done quicker and definitely you've done better if they're a professional? Or do you save the money yourself and do the work and you run the risk of it not being quite as good but you haven't paid someone to do it. Right, top tip, I'm just in the house, in the kitchen. You can see why we're doing a renovation to this place. I mean, it's just old and miserable. I'll give you a proper tour around uh, at another time. What I wanted to do is just give you a super top tip. Earlier in the video, you'll have seen that I bought a whole load of k -Rend and that I needed this stuff. I'm gonna sit down. I bought Silicon FT, which is a one coat system but it's only one coat if you're doing it straight onto block work. So you do your block work and you can just then silicon straight on, uh, silicon FT, whatever color you want, white, ivory, whatever. Because mine is timber frame on the loft, I need to felt it, which I was gonna do anyway. 
I then need to batten it and then I need to put like a render carrier board, like a cement board that allows you to render over it. Now, because I'm doing that, I then need to do a base coat. And so what I've done is I went back to the same guys that I bought the silicon FT from. Now, when I first chatted with them, they were like, oh, look, yeah, we've got some, we've got some base coat, you can have that. And I was like, I don't think I need the base coat. And they were like, well, look, if you want it cheap, you can have it because it's covered in bird crap and it's going cheap. And I said, well, look, you know, if you're gonna sell it to me for seconds, you know, and they said, yeah, look, we'll do it for a pound a bag. And then I said, well, look, I only need the top coat. And they said, well, look, we can't really sell you that for a pound a bag, but they still gave me 30% off per bag. So instead of 17 pounds a bag, I got for 11 pounds a bag, which is good for K-Rend. I've then done a bit more research because I was going in a little bit blind and it turns out I do need the base coat. So I went back to them today and said, any chance you've still got those seconds? Can I take some bags of that? And they said, yeah. So I got it for a pound a bag. So top tip, if you're going to a builder's merchant regularly, chat to them, use their name, get to know them. Don't be chummy chummy because you're not mates with them, but be friendly, be affable. Don't be, you know, don't be standoffish. Build a rapport with them and then ask. You know, you don't ask, you don't get. I always think it's worth just, you know, being a cheek, bit of a cheeky smile, say, oh, any chance you've got any seconds? They may well go, you know what, actually, no, but I'll do you a bit of a discount. So top tip, go and ask your builder's merchant if they've got any seconds, go a few times, buy a few bits at full, you know, I'd bought some other stuff at full price. So I had, you know, I'd gone in there and I'd spent, you know, a couple of hundred quid with them on full price stuff, buying some bits, getting what I needed, telling them about the project, what I'm doing getting to know them a little bit better. And you know, I reckon you can do this. I'm based in the UK, so we've got the big ones. You've got um, Selco, you've got Travis Perkins, all those sorts. You can do it with them just as easily as you can with your local builder's merchant. In fact, you could probably do it a bit easier with them than you can with your local builder's merchant. So yeah, don't be shy. Give it a go, ask. You don't ask, you don't get. Leave a comment down below. I wanna see whether you guys have managed this before or had any luck speaking to your local builders merchant, speaking to your, to, your, to your big national builders merchant, asking them for a discount, seeing what luck you've had. So yeah, post a comment, let me know, and uh, we'll have a chat. Right, another thing to think about when you are coming down here is any waste pipe uh, extras that you've got. I say extra because the last connection of that waste pipe is way down there. And then all of that is just extra coming up here. So. I can cut it pretty much anywhere, but obviously I need to bear in mind that I want to connect back into it because I've got to, I'm going to have a waste pipe coming out of here and keying in there for the toilet that's on the other side of this wall. First run is in. The reason that it's crinkled there is because of this here. It's all bunched up there but it is straight and flat the whole way along. So I know that once that pipe there is cut out from underneath, then that will sit flat in the gutter. Now I've got to do the second run, and this can be quite tricky. I'm on my own right now, uh, the, the builders have had to go. So a little tip that the roofer gave me before he left, because uh, he knew I was gonna be doing this, he said, tack the top one in, and then, you know, support the roll, and, tack another one in the bottom where the overlap is. Obviously you've got to overlap your top sheet with your bottom sheet. So you work from the bottom up so that any, any drips run over. He said, and then go the whole way across. So you run that the whole way across, past the scaffold beam, the whole way across. When you get to the other side, you check your level. So I'm happy with that. That's on the bubble and then tack it in up here and then carry on. So we've actually ended the roll here, which is perfect because that will get me right to the end there. Put the camera down and tack it in place. Right, this is a bit of extra faff, but it's important. I've got a little hatch on the side, but behind here, that if you can see the outline, there is a hole here which we which we cut and left here. So that's what I was talking about. So you cut down and you cut down, and then you cut down like that. And then you just fold that up and in there, fold that round in there, in there, yada yada yada. You get the picture. Obviously then I've got access to bits in the loft. That's the excess there. I can put this back in like that. Job's a good one. Once the side extension is done to get access to the roof space that will be here once we've built above the garage and 
put this the hipped roof that will come in here so all of this ultimately will get covered like I've said it'll all get covered but I need to weatherproof it and watertight it now because I don't know how long it'll take me to get to do that second phase right second line in just got to cover a little bit that was the end of the roll uh, so I'll need to just I can I can fill it in with a bit of off cut that's fine it's not the end of the world but uh, even if I didn't. The other thing I completely forgot about, which I've seen in my workshop and remembered, is this phenomenal tool. Little thing here, staples straight in. So you got there, you want to fix it there. Bosh. Makes it so much quicker. So uh, this cost me, I think, £10 from Aldi. It came with four packs of staples. It's definitely worth having a look at one of these. I think it's called a bump stapler. Really handy little piece of kit. Okay, so that's all pretty good, I think. I'm quite happy with that. Might tack that last one down a little bit, but otherwise it's fine. I marked on this beam here where each of the beams need to go, roughly in line. So as long as it's straight up from there, I know that I'm on a joist. So you get the spirit level, offer it up, hold the two, make sure that it's level, plumb and all that sort of good stuff, and then screw them in. It's the end of the day, the builders have now gone. I am all alone on the job from here on out. We've still got some spare tiles left over, which we're gonna keep, because obviously when we do the side extension, it's, uh, it's free money, isn't it? Didn't quite finish the battening today. We'll do all of that tomorrow and start getting some of that sideboard up. Got a plumber who's a mate of mine coming to help me talk through moving this and where to cut it so we can key in for where the toilet's gonna be because obviously we're gonna need that at some point. But I need it out the way for doing the cement board and the k rend and all of that. So that's all felted, semi-battened. We finished putting this beaded trim all the way up. The builder did a really nice little bell on there on the end of the gable, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. I don't care what you think, unless it's positive. If you like it, leave a comment. If you don't, don't.